Morning. There's no milk. You've used it all again. Yeah? I said you've used all the milk. All right. Every rotten morning you do it. Well, you know what to do about it, don't you? What? Get up sooner. How are things between you and Mrs Walker, Lucille? Oh, back to normal. She's treating me like an eight-year-old, so I'm acting like one. I've noticed that. That'll be quite enough of that, Lucille. I'm afraid Ray's got bad news for you, love. Yeah, the, uh, the only way is to take the window out and replace the old bricks. Which means you haven't got a bedroom. Oh, Mum, well, a little hole in the wall ain't gonna worry me. I could sleep in a shipping. And as. I think the best solution is a week at the Black Lawn, dear Winifred Heppelwart's care. Oh, can I pack his bags for him? Isn't she sweet? No. Oh, Lucy. They are, Mr Tatlock. There's your glass of tea. And there's a packet of chewing gum for you for being the day's first customer. And may all your troubles be little ones. What's up with you this morning? Turned over a new leaf? Being civil to your customers for a change? Something like that. Yeah, well, it's not before time. And I don't like chewing gum. Give it to him. You just can't win, can you? Not in business, you can't, no. And who should know that better than you? Do you want your uh, cigarettes? Yes, please. Right, 20. Yes, please. Thank you. Ciao. But listen, will you tell Billy Redney's I'd like a word with him? Well, I will if he's still speaking to me, but I'm a bit late this morning. Oh, speak of the devil. Just locked up for lunch? No, mate. Uh, no, here's the keys. Open up, Bruce, will you? I've always slept a bit. The boss is supposed to set an example, no, you know, I punctuality. Guess. I know, I know. But... Do you want to save me? No, nothing. I thought I'd better let you know that uh, Bill Sweeney said he'll lend you the money. There's the terms, his terms. Well, they could be worse. Yes, they might well be, darling, too. You want to watch him? Watch your honour. Me what? Hey, you better write to Maggie and tell her. She'll be tickled pink. So she ought to be an all. I mean, what's the use of having a shop up here if she's all the way down there in Birmingham? Like, I mean, she should jump at the chance, shouldn't she? So that's your last word? You're not coming? No, he's not. The fact that we've gone to town every Tuesday morning for the past 20 years means nothing to you. Well, I've told you, Ian, I'm expecting Handel. I see. What do you see? Where I stand. And where do you stand? Nowhere, obviously. With how you can jeopardise a lifetime's friendship for a... Well, a foreigner, because that's what he is. A chap from England weren't good enough who comes slavering back when he's now better to do with his life and you fall for him. Oh, I haven't fallen for him, Ina. We're just good friends. You know what I think? No, it's something nasty, I suppose, in your present mood. I think you're man-mad. And just try and live with this if you can. You're not going to town means I don't need to go into town. Because for some daft reason, I miss your silly company. Well, miss it. And something else. What? I'd make very sure that his intentions are honourable. Hello, Minnie. Oh, hello, Angle. Mrs Sharples isn't speaking to me now. Oh, you've just seen her then? Yes, yeah, she just walked straight past and didn't even bother to glare. Well, you see, we've had a difference. I always go out with her Tuesday morning. We go shopping and then we have tea and share a crumpet in the market hall. And, of course, I couldn't go this morning. On account of me? Hmm. Well, would you rather have gone with Mrs Sharples? I'm not sure. I see. Oh, oh, no, I didn't go, did I? So I suppose that's your answer. Yes. Well, take your coat off. Right, thank you. You know what I feel? No. Very pleased. Well, you know what they say about three? Uh, three's a crowd. Exactly. Especially when the third person's Ina. Especially then. Andrew? Yes? Are your intentions honourable? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I was hoping they weren't. <laughs> Yes, like I said to your husband this morning, I said, I'm ever so glad that Mark settled in with you both. Yeah. How much is that, Emma, please? Uh, he's four and eight, you owe me. All right. Yeah. I mean, you've had your share of young'uns clustering up the house, haven't you? Thank Bye, you. Bob. So, so you must have had your doubts, loud when Mark popped up out of nowhere, you know. So. Thank you. Good travels. Morning. It was a waste of time, wasn't it, as the bee said to the plastic flower? You've got a lot to learn, lass. Half a pound of margarine. Do you know, I can't get her to say a word about that, Mark. Perhaps she doesn't want to say out about him. Ah, you could be right there, which must mean that she's not very happy at being landed with him. I'll tell you so much of that. You're going more like your mother every day. Oh, thanks very much. And something else? Yes. The one good thing about having Maggie Clegg run in this shop was that she didn't jump to conclusions about folk. Can I have a turn? What? 
You'll have to get used to me and my conclusions, Mrs Sharples, because Maggie's not coming back, not to run the shop any road. Oh, that's the first I've heard. Well, you don't hear everything, Mrs Sharples, not quite. And just to put you completely in the picture, I'm buying Maggie out. Does she know? Well, not right now, but she will when I've wrote to her tomorrow. Oh, well, I suppose you've let on as good a time as editor to do it. And what's that supposed to mean? When she's far enough away and got other things on her mind. Going to college today, Mark? No, not till this afternoon. Oh, you'll be in for your dinner then? Mm hmm. Oh, well, in that case, I'll get you some fish and chips. Are you not going to be in for dinner then? No, but it doesn't matter. I'll get you some fish and chips. Oh, no, no, I'll get my own dinner. No, can you cook? I can pose your neck. Ah, I'll get you some chips. No, 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 really. I'll go out and get myself a pie or something. I don't want you to put yourself to any bother because of me. No bother. No, I'm sure. I don't want to put anybody to any trouble, no, particularly you. Men? Oh, I am glad I found you in Elsie. I wonder, could I have some more of that face cream? You know, it really seems to do something for me. People are saying I'm actually looking younger. Well, we don't actually guarantee that it does that, Mrs. Walker, but I'll get one of my agents to drop you in, say, um, a dozen jars. Oh, no. One will be quite sufficient, dear. I don't want to be the belle of the district. <laughs> and how are you, Mark? Very well, Mrs. Walker, thank mm. you. How are you? Oh, I'm very well. I uh, probably shouldn't tell you this, but uh, Lucille was inquiring after you as well. She seems impressed, quite impressed. So, don't be afraid to pop in any time. Right. <laughs> well, goodbye. Bye-bye. Mm. Uh, do you sell pies at the Rovers? Only the best. Well, I might pop in at about dinner time, then, for a pie. Bye, I'll tell Lucille. Au revoir. Au revoir. How delightful to meet a young man with civilised manners. How about that, then? Yeah, how about that? Well, you see, Miss Nugent, some days I can fight the thirst off until, ooh, after 12 even, like today. And then other days it's all I can do to last out till opening time. Albert's just the same, aren't you, Albert? That's right. Especially when somebody else is paying. Huh? But I do think you should try to drink a little less, Raymond, at your age. You think it might do me some harm? Well, it won't do you any good, not in the quantities you seem to partake of. How long have you been supping, Albert? Oh, since I was five year old. <coughs> My dad used to bring a quart jug from pub every Sunday dinner time. And how old are you now? Well, let's say that I'm a septuagenarian. There's no more to be said, Miss Nugent. All I am saying, Lucille, is that he is an extremely well-mannered young man. And if some of his good manners should brush off onto you, well, all to the good. What do you want me to do? Fall at his feet? Oh, don't be ridiculous. Cultivate him, that's all. Just cultivate him. Well, thank you, Miss Nugent. I'll take over now. Your lunch is on the hot plate. Oh, uh, a juicy chop, is it? A chop? Well, today being Tuesday, we do usually seem to have chops on Tuesdays. Hmm. Having the same dish on the same day of every week is generally supposed to be a habit of the working classes. Oh, oh I wasn't suggesting... No, no, I'm sure you weren't. Uh, the menu today is hot pot. Oh. Mark's only a kid, really. Oh, and you like your chaps a bit more mature, eh? As a matter of fact, I do, yes. Well, then, why don't you go out with Albert? You won't find anybody maturer than him, only Methuselah. Now, look, you watch it. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, Albert, I forgot. You're Ina Sharple's fancy man, aren't you? Oh. Hey, here's Freddie Bartholomew. Oh, we'll go and smile sweetly at him. Hello. What can I do for you? Well, your mother said you sell pies. Uh, my guardian, I haven't got a mother. Oh, I'm sorry. I've got two. Two? Two mothers, yeah. My real one and Elsie. Oh, yeah. Lucky you. Uh, did you want a pie? Yeah. To take out? Yes, please. Hello. 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 One day. Yeah. One of four. Thank you. One. Pleasure. What are you doing tonight, then? Oh, minding me on business, I should think. Oh, well, you're not um, fixed up or anything, are you? Uh, no, why? Oh, I just wondered. Oh, bye. Ta. Isn't he charming, Lucille? Not backward at coming forward either, is he? <laughs> I suppose cheese and onions will have to do. But I wish I could afford to give Mr. Gartside something special for his tea, with him being a visitor from overseas. Having trouble with the old exchequer, are you, Mrs. Caldwell? 
If that means am I poor, yes, I am, Billy. Well, I've always spent my pension before I get it. You'll just have to sell all that jewellery. You've got it up the chimney, Mrs Caldwell. <laughs> oh, well, the only good jewellery I ever had beside my wedding ring was my engagement ring, and I lost that on the sands at Blackpool in 1934. Aye, aye. Oh, I wasn't misbehaving myself for anything. <laughs> Mrs Caldwell? Yes, Billy? How would you like to earn yourself a few extra bob this week? Oh, I would. Only we're having some repairs done at home, and I've got to pack my bags, so... Uh... Supposing you would have put me off. Oh, I'd be delighted. Only I'll have to charge you three pounds, the same as I did Sonny, Jim and Lucille. Well, let's, uh, let's make it four pounds, shall we, Mrs Colwell? Oh, well, that's very generous. And, uh, well, it would make me very happy if you'd call me Ma. All right. Well, I'll be around tonight with me toilet bag and me pyjamas, Ma. Oh, well, I'll go and make your bed up. Right. <laughs> If you'd gone on your knees and pleaded, you could have stopped with me. I snore. So do I. Hey, can I have a quarter of tea for a brew? <laughs> hey, do you know, I've been thinking this fella, he won't have spent his money on fast women, will he? He'll still have some for me. Very probably, but he's loaded. Shall I uh, fix up a meeting with him, shall I? Oh, yes, please, and as soon as possible. I'll have to get it all sorted out. Sit down, look. We're closed. Oh, can't you read or something? Even shopkeepers have to have dinner hours, you know. Only when they're by themselves, look. And you're not now, are you? Maggie? Well, don't look so surprised to see me. You didn't think I'd gone for good, did you? It's ridiculous, quite ridiculous. How do you make that out? You want to move from a home with every modern convenience into a house that, well, to put it at its highest, is little more than a clean slum. Oh. Mrs Caldwell's house isn't a slum, Mrs Walker. It's very cosy. And so is a stable cosy, but who wants to lie on the hay? Well, I'm going, Mum, I promise. Yes, well, you might have consulted me first. Look, it was done on the spur of the moment. Mrs Caldwell was complaining it's about... demeaning. Finding, finding it difficult to make ends meet. A man in your position shouldn't go into mean lodgings. He ought to go into a hotel. Look, she needs the money, Mum. I'm helping an old lady out. Yes, well, one can be too friendly, you know. One should be aloof occasionally. One should show that one is different. Mum. Yes? If you don't hush, I shall pack more than an overnight bag to take to Mrs. Caldwell's. I'll take all my worldly possessions. You wouldn't. Oh, yes, I would. For one thing, lodging with Mrs. C is cheaper than lodging here. Am I being unreasonable, Emily? Oh, I'm, I'm sure I don't know, Mrs Walker. Well, be a devil and hazard an opinion for once. No, oh, I... I don't think you're being unreasonable. I think you're being quite stupid. Yeah, well, it's, it's right enough. Eight, uh, 50,000 folks in their 80s entitled to a pension as from this week. And some of them haven't even bothered to come forward to claim it. Perhaps they don't know they're entitled. No, they won't know living on their own. Never seen anybody, never looking at a newspaper. Well, how'd you let them know, then? Oh, don't ask me. Of course, they'll be the other kind as well, won't they? What other kind? Well, then, that don't mean to claim the pensions. People that have made provision for their old age got a nest egg together. What, like yourself, you mean? Yes, that's right. And I suppose it's never occurred to you that folks of my generation were never lucky enough to be able to save for a nest egg. I'm your generation, Albert. Look, I'm talking about folks that have lived here all their lives, in England, in good times and bad. Not folks that couldn't stick the bad times and went off to colonies. It wasn't easy to root yourself up and go to another country, you know. No, but I bet it would have been a sight easy to stop in here through a depression and war. Are you trying to say that people shouldn't change for their old age? No, no, of course I'm not. But what I am saying, them as have been lucky enough to, shouldn't boast about it. Particularly when they made the pile in some other country. I wouldn't worry about him, Mr. Gartside. He makes a career out of insulting people. It's just that I'm making too many enemies. It's just the opposite of what I want to do. Uh, if people in England changed, I, I seem to remember that they were friendlier. Well, 
people aren't as dependent on each other as they used to be. I mean, well, it's different now. They've got telly and social security. Oh, I suppose you're right. Still, Mrs Caldwell seems to be very fond of you. You think so? Oh, I'd say it was very obvious. Well, I suppose that's one of the advantages of falling out with Albert and Mrs Sharples. It clears the field as far as Mrs Caldwell's concerned. And that can't be bad, can it? No, it can't. Hello, kid. You're trying to pick me up, are you? You'll never guess what. Your dad's taken up the cross. <laughs> Maggie's come back. Oh, never. When? Just now. Oh, eh. So that puts the tin hat on me buying it out. I thought I'd come and tell you so you don't go fixing that date with your friend. Oh, hang on. There's no need to burn your bridges all at once. Well, what's the point? She's come home to stay. She's made that perfectly plain. Have you mentioned to her about buying out? Oh, you must be joking. She'd scratch my eyes out. I was supposing you did. No, I can't now. No, do it very subtly, very quiet at first. You know, just sort of put the idea into her head. You never know. She might like the idea of a lot of cash in her hand. I mean, it's a very powerful persuader, is money, you know. Oh, but I'm not suckle enough for that game, honestly. I mean, my style's more uh, bullet a gate. Well, you just have to learn to be suckle, won't you, my old darling? trying to impress me, would you, Mark? I don't find you, Dad. Or this. I don't remember you being very keen on homework in the past. Well, you've got to, haven't you, if you want to get on. And do you? Of course I do. And what do you mean by get on? Uh, get a good job, make some money. Good. Very good. Dad. Yeah. How did you come unstuck? Oh, a bit of misfortune. Some of it my fault, some of it not. Mum sort of forecast it, you know. Did she? Yeah. She said you needed her behind you. Did she? Yeah. Look, Mark, it wouldn't have made any difference if your mother had been behind me or not, as far as coming a crop is concerned. That's well, just what she said. She doesn't go out much, you know. Not out socially, I mean. Oh? No. She says she's becoming a right home bird. Which is a change for her, isn't it? Yes. A change for the better. What are you staring at? Um, it's a bit of suit or something on your nose. No, on the other side. A bit further up. You've got it. Oh, thanks. There's nothing wrong, is there? If you mean I'm going to have another mental relapse, the answer's no, and I'm not planning to steal no more babies, neither. I didn't mean that, Irma. Didn't you? No. Oh. Um, Miss Nugent. Yes? Uh, listen, if you wanted something uh, very badly, well, how wrong would it be to do something just a little bit underhanded to get it? Totally wrong. I thought you'd say that. Though we all do it. All of us. Well, nothing seems to have changed much, Emma. Well, does it ever round here? No, I suppose not. How's business been? Well, uh, we had it a bit low like when my mum took over, but he's picked up since. Good. Oh, I can't wait to get back in harness. Oh, you are getting back in the harness then, are you? Well, of course. Oh, I've missed this shop. Missed it a lot. Why'd you ask? Nothing. It won't be long now. Good. I'm a bit peckish. Oh, I do hope you like cheese and onions. Oh, I haven't had any for a very long time. Must be nearly 40 years. My mother used to make it, especially when we had colds. Oh, my mother was a big believer in, in just boiled onions for a cold. <laughs> I wonder if they worked. What? Well, all those old remedies for various ailments. Oh, I don't know. I think it was a kind of faith healing myself. I expect you're right. You know, I think the funniest I heard of was carrying a potato boat in your pocket if you had a bad back. <laughs> <laughs> what did you used to eat in Canada? Well, not cheese and onions, you can bet. Oh. You know, where I was, there was a lot of French influence in the cooking. Oh, did you like it? Oh, it can be very tasty. Well, the French have a very good reputation for cooking, you know. 
I don't know. I've never had any French mm. food. You know, this is just about as perfect as life can be. What is? Uh, sitting here on the fire with somebody. Well, with somebody you like. Yes, it is nice. Mm. And I thought I was going to finish my days four floors up in a Quebec apartment block. I suppose I still could at that. Well, of course, that's up to you. You're a free agent, aren't you, like most men are? Yes, you could say that. It well, is up to me. I'll go and see if the cheese and onions are ready. I do hope you like them. Bliss. Perfect bliss. Pardon? I said bliss. Perfect bliss. Evening. Good evening. Oh, hello, Billy. You've right. come, then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, do you like cheese and onions? Uh, well, I'm not really sure. Well, I suppose I'll have to like it, won't I? If I'm going to be living here. Living here? Yeah. Me and Ma. I'm a new lodger. If I ever came into some money, do you know what I'd do? What? I'd go to university or college, like you're doing, Mark. Just for the atmosphere as much as anything. Somewhere entirely devoted to the pursuit of knowledge. Oh, you obviously haven't heard of the student revolution, Emily. They've changed all that. You pursue the little red book at college now, you know. Oh, nonsense, Raymond. For every student rebel, there's a score or more who are just wanting to be left alone to learn. Oh, no, that's true enough. Me, for instance. I can't understand why people don't see the truth about most of the world's so-called revolutionaries. They're children. Who throws most of the stones in Ireland? Teenagers. They're not rebelling, they're just showing off. You've been listening to Lucille, haven't you? I haven't been listening to anyone. Well, I'm very glad I brought the subject up so you could get it off your chest, if you'll pardon the expression. You know what you are, Raymond Langton? Tell me, Emily. Mentally arrested. <laughs> and I've always told people you were a very nice lady till now. Hello, Dollface, off to see Prince Charlie, are we? Yes. Ask a silly question, and you, you get, get a silly answer. answer. Well, you look very nice. Thank you. You fancy her, do you? Shut up, Brad. Yeah, I do, as a matter of fact. Well, ask her out, then. She uh, don't get all that many dates, you know. I'll murder you. Will you come out with her, see us? Yes. You can pick me up tomorrow night. Right. And you know what you can do? Drop dead. Yeah, but I'd like to see you suffer first. Trapped. Trapped. I'd better come with you tomorrow night, Sailor, make sure she doesn't do you any harm, you know. Well, look who's here. Oh, hello. Hello, Mr. Walker. Alan. Garth, how's Elsie? Oh, fine. I heard you were by. What are you going to have to drink, Maggie? No, um, oh, no. If anyone buys her a drink, I do. I want to know what she's been up to. Oh, well, uh, a dry sherry, then, please. Come Coming up. And don't you dare to move. <laughs> well, you look fit enough, Elsie. I feel it, kid. You look pretty good yourself. Yes, I'm, I'm all right, considering. Thanks. Uh, Maggie, you won't mind if I go and sit down for a minute? I've been on my feet all day. No, no, of course not. I'll, uh, I'll join you as soon as... Uh, oh, you'll be lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Does it? Ah, uh, well, Elsie uh, said she fancied a sit-down. You know, I never feel the need. Isn't it funny? You know what they say, young in mind, young in body. <laughs> Mr. Clay took cover then, has he, did? Uh, yes, yes, he has. He's, uh, he's very well, thank you. <laughs> Why did he say it, then? Well, perhaps because it's true. Perhaps his mother doesn't go out as much as she used to, neither do we. Well, the way he said it, straight at me. Else, do you think he's hinting at something? Could have done. Like what? Oh, I don't know. Well, I certainly don't. All right. Hinting that you should go back to her. Why not? After all, you're his dad, she's his mother. It has happened before, you know. You read about these things. You read about what things? A child of a broken marriage bringing the parents back together again. And you think Mark's come to take me back to his mother? It's possible. I think it's ridiculous. <laughs> Ask Mark. He lived through that buster. Yeah. Perhaps I'm seeing in the wrong light. Did you love her? I came to hate her. Oh, yeah. Usual, is it? I'd like to have a word with Mrs. Clegg, if you don't mind. Mm. <laughs> Your presence is desired in the snug. I think it's official. Oh, dear. Better not keep her waiting, then, Ada. <laughs> Ah, oh, yes, Mrs. Sharples. Not, uh, not after your job back by any chance, are you? A job, do you mean? Well, where else? I'm very surprised to hear you say you can give me a job in there. Oh, why not? It's my shop. Well, most of it is. Is it? <laughs> yes, it is. But for how long? From what I hear, Emma Ball, I was on the point of buying you out. Or didn't she bother to tell you? 